everyone, welcome to Ask an Armor. My name is Kia and today I'm going to be showing you part of the process for how to rewire your epay. If you watched my videos on how to do this with foil, it's the exact same thing, just with a couple minor tweaks for dealing with the two wires in epay versus one wire in foil. I'm going to be filming this process over several videos so I can really break down each method that I use as well as the various pros and cons of each technique. There's no objectively correct method to use though, as I've had success with everything I'm going to show you, as well as other armorers may have different techniques that they've developed and use as well. The only goal that we have is to have a functional weapon that fits within the technical requirements laid out by the FIE at the end of the process. So as with my recommendation videos for tools, I will always, always, always recommend that you try whatever methods you come across to see which one ends up working out the best for you. To begin, you're going to need to take apart your epee completely, including taking the tip off. If you need a refresher on how to do this, you can go ahead and watch my video on how to assemble an epee and just reverse those steps, as well as watch my video on how to tighten the barrel of an epee, but just turn the barrel counterclockwise rather than clockwise. Now, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make an acetone bath in order to remove the old wire and glue from your epee's groove. It's important that you really make sure that your epee's groove is clean before you start a new rewiring process, as any residue, old glue, insulation, bits of wire, etc. left in there will inhibit the forming of a strong bond with the new glue and can lead to popped wires later. As with so many things, it's not hard to deal with, I just personally find it really annoying, so I'd rather do a better job prepping up front so that I don't have more work to do later. So for both types of bath, all you're going to need is your blade and some acetone or nail polish remover if it's 100% acetone. Then for one type of acetone bath, you're just going to need some tin foil, make sure that you have at least three and a half feet worth of it. And then for the second type, you're just going to need a steel or copper pipe with the ends, one end sealed and with a cap on the other end. Regardless of which method you use, you're going to want to make sure that you're in a well-ventilated area, as well as one where you wouldn't mind some drips falling on the floor. Therefore, when I'm doing this here, as you can see I'm still at home, I tend to do this in my bathroom. Alright, first I'm going to be showing you the way to make a bath with the tin foil. You're going to need to a length that's about 8 inches or 20 centimeters longer than your blade. Now, fold it in half lengthwise twice. Next, bend it into thirds lengthwise with the base being wider than your blade and the sides a bit longer as we'll be folding them together later. Once you've finished your little boat, take your blade and go ahead and just place it down into the bottom of it. Next, take the ends and start rolling them together to seal them. I like bending them into a triangle first and then wrapping them over themselves, but you can do whatever works for you. Once you've done both ends, start working your way down the blade, sealing the top edges together. Leave an opening a couple of inches wide, though, somewhere along the length. Finally, once your blade is wrapped and the seams are secure, go ahead and pour the acetone into the opening you left. Once you fill, see it filling the space inside, Go ahead and stop pouring, and then just seal up the rest of the opening. If you want to use a pipe style acetone bath, your life is going to be a little bit more work up front, but less work moving forward. It's pretty easy to make one of these. All you need is a pipe that is longer and wider than your blade, including the tang and its bend. And then you'll also need your soldering kit. So all you need to do is take your pipe, and solder one end completely closed with a cap, and then that's it. You're done, you're ready to go. <laughs> Do keep in mind, however, that the more bend and the longer your tang is, the longer and wider your pipe will be. So for example, a pistol cut 
very slightly bent Epe will have a much smaller pipe needed than one that uses a French grip with a heavily bent tang. I made that mistake with the first pipe that I ever built and I still keep it around for, you know, smaller projects, but it certainly cannot handle anything that I need. So the second pipe that I made is much larger and can handle anything as well as multiple blades at once, which is really convenient when I have to take care of an entire team's worth of rewires. Now, something to note. I made this mistake a couple of times when I was first starting to use my pipe acetone bath but you are most likely not going to be able to reach the blade once you've dropped it into the bath. And getting it out is a whole process that's rather annoying. Not impossible, but certainly annoying. So, in order to make sure we don't run into this issue, you'll need an old wire. Um, I typically just use one I got off of a different rewire as I personally tend to have a lot of those lying around, but really any wire you have on hand will work. I don't recommend using string though as it really doesn't tend to hold up well in the acetone. But all you need to do is take your wire and wrap it around the tang a couple of times, fold it up and then wrap it a couple more times around itself again to make sure that it's really secure. If you want, you can even twist the two ends together just so it really doesn't come off. Now you have a convenient little handle that will be much longer and you can grab and use this to pull the wire out of the bath once it's ready. Now, with all of this taken care of, go ahead and put your blade in the bath. I'm sorry about any noise right now. and cover up the rest of the way with acetone as needed. Finally, take your cap, and for the life of me, I cannot find the actual cap that goes with this, but if you don't have one, that's okay. You can go ahead and cover it up. And since I'm just using tin foil, I'm going to add an additional sealant of just a bit of rubber band. And now, with either bath type, all we have to do is wait. The acetone is going to do all of the hard work for us, and we just need to set this aside somewhere where it won't be disturbed for at least a few hours, but I prefer to do it overnight to really, really make sure that all of the old glue is dissolved. So the benefits of this process. As I mentioned earlier, the acetone basically does all of the work for us, and in this way we can guarantee the cleanest blade afterwards, as the acetone can just access every part of the blade equally and dissolve everything. However, the downsides are that this method does have some danger involved as acetone is highly flammable and the fumes are really not healthy if you inhale too many of them. So, which is why you really need to make sure that you're doing this in a well-ventilated area in a place that you can monitor it. Also, this method does take a fair bit of time, even the shortest amount of time you would want to keep something in the bath is at least two to three hours in order for it to be effective. So if you're really pressed for time, this method probably isn't the best one for you to use. And there you go, your blade is well on its way to being ready to be rewired. I'll have a few other videos on both other preparation techniques and then a couple different gluing techniques that I know coming up later, so make sure you stay tuned for all of that. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to like and subscribe, and as always, if you have any questions, comments, or other topics you'd like me to cover in the future, let me know down below. See you in the next one, bye!